The liaison officer for the Urban Search and Rescue Team told New Zealand Television that they remain confident, but it's impossible to say just how many people are still trapped. What we're doing at present still is gaining planning and intelligence about this. Um, we have surveyed quite a few of the buildings now. Uh, we are concentrating on the ones we know there are people trapped. They're very labour intensive. The um, CTV building and the PGG building have got an excess of 50 staff at each. It's a major job just for those two buildings. What we are doing though is ramping up very quickly. We have uh, all three task forces from New Zealand here now. We have uh, one task force from Australia in place from New South Wales. A Queensland task force will be on the ground by now, I'd expect, and on its way to Latimer Square, base of operations. And we have task forces on the way from Japan, Singapore and the United States. Can you give us an, an idea of how many different buildings you're looking at? Uh, we're at present, we're concentrating on the top ten because we know there's multiple people in those buildings. At consequent, with that, we're using engineers to go and assess dozens and dozens of other buildings, which, as we ramp up the urban search and rescue people, we'll be in a position to task them to go and search. Our absolute priority at the moment is the life risk, and that will be so until we determine otherwise. Well, as we just felt then, a little earth, um, a little uh, aftershock just then, that must be making it very difficult for your teams if they're getting constant aftershocks. Well, you're correct. That was a very little aftershock. Shop. Some of the ones we had last evening were in fact extremely strong. That's what makes it very dangerous. What we do do is we've got very strict protocols, our training. We're using trained structural engineers all the way. We don't want to lose any rescuers in the process. It's a very dangerous job. It's a challenging job, but the staff are well trained for it and have the right equipment, and uh, we are having success. Let's talk about the successes, because you're pulling guys out, aren't you? Pulling yeah, people we out. Are, we are pulling people out. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact number as of now, but we're still, still pulling people out as we speak. Unfortunately, some of those people are deceased as well, but um, we're ever hopeful. Um, we think uh, that we can still make an impact and bring more people out yet, but it's very difficult to put a judge on that because as we go down through the building, some people can be very lucky and be in a pocket, other people not so lucky, we just don't know. So what, what, how do you get to those people? You've got dogs, you've got sort of hearing devices? What we do is we use the dogs initially uh, to sense for the people, then we use uh, what we call Delsa sensing equipment. We also have uh, microfeed video cameras that we can use. We've got thermal engine cameras to pick up body heat and that sort of thing. Once we locate where those people are, we make a safe entry by using uh, heavy rescue equipment. We put safe houses in and then get to the people and get them out as we can. How crucial is it the fact that I mean, some of them were able to make contact? Are you, st are you still hearing anything? Are people tapping anything? Is there any noises? Yes, there is. There's still noises, so people are still in there, yes. And that and that intensifies efforts in those areas? It does, but uh, it's very painstaking work. Um, just because someone's tapping doesn't mean they're one, feet, one metre away or five metres away, so we need to use the proper process. We identify with the dogs, we check exactly where the people are, and then the engineer and the technicians between themselves will determine the best access route to that person. What's your feeling about, uh, say, residential Christchurch? That, uh, uh, there could be more areas that need searching as well. Well, I should add also that uh, if we don't follow that process, we could actually make it worse for the person that's trapped. We must right. follow the process. But is there a risk that uh, there are places we haven't even started to look yet? Uh, there is. Um, at this stage, our planning and intelligence is based on the four avenues, but that's based on solid uh, intelligence. Uh, certainly the most devastation is in the four avenues. There is evidence of uh, damage in the suburbs as well. The City Council are putting in a plan for that right now with uh, some of their response team members. Um, but our main priority must be the CBD because we do know that those buildings are containing a lot of people that we have not found yet. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Mayor and others have told us to steal, told New Zealanders to steal themselves for what's ahead. What's your feeling about, about that? I mean, you, you've seen it. It's looking pretty bad. Uh, yes, but as I said before, um, to do our job we have to be confident and uh, we're going to stick at it and use our training and our equipment and uh, get as many of those people out as we can and give them back to their loved ones.